How's it going, everybody? It's your favorite apostates. I'm McKay. And I'm Jordan. And we're doing a massive sex toy giveaway, so stay tuned for more details on that. I look like those cakes that people get where there's like the Barbie in the middle of the cake, <laughs> and then the rest of the cake is the dress. <laughs> That's how I feel. This is how I look. I look like shit. I just got home from work. I just finished therapizing people. I am very tired and my face is my face. So that's, this is what you get. I am raw and unfiltered. So apologies in advance. Don't cancel me. Don't come for me. I think I've covered all my bases. <laughs> Sounds like you could use a little self care, Jordan. Yep. Yeah. And who better to provide a little self care to everybody than our sponsor for the day, Balesa. So we and our friends over at Balesa are literally sending out free vibrators and gift cards to everyone that signs up for our giveaway. Balesa is a bi women company with all of your sexuality needs. That includes sex toys, that includes erotica, that includes porn, and that even includes sex ed, which is much needed as we will get to later in this video. For real. So Balesa's mission is to empower everyone to embrace, explore, and celebrate their sexuality. And that aligns quite nicely with what we tried to do on this channel. So we thought it would be helpful to talk about some of these awesome toys that you might be receiving for free or using your free gift cards on. This one is the Demi Wand. It's got this stylish yellow charging case. It's the case and it doubles for the charger. You just plug it into a little micro USB right here on the side. And nice and convenient. It is awesome and convenient. And I mean, it's a variation on the classic wand, but it is like this high quality product. Balesa believes that orgasms are for everyone, hence the shirt. So they designed this toy with that in mind. It has this little flexible neck. It has multiple vibration speeds with none of the annoying vibration patterns that you get on a lot of other low, lower quality toys and things of that nature. So it's Real just really, talk. really awesome all around product. Okay, my favorite. This is the Pebble. First of all, what a cute name. Second, it has this cute case. Look at this, this is perfect. You don't have to put it in your regular bathroom drawer that's ugly and yeah. filled with all these things. You have a perfect little case. Also, USB chargeable. Ergonomically, look at this beauty. It fits right in your hand. It's not awkward to hold, which is beautiful, right? Super cute, colored pink. Two purposes. One, suction, hell yeah, number one. Two, vibration, hell yeah, can't go wrong. Both of these things, again, no weird vibration patterns. This device right here is life-changing, so. Cut through the crap. You heard it here first. No crappy vibration patterns, perfect suction, life-changing product right here. I am not joking, can testify, personal <laughs> experience, you need this in your life. So right now I'll put a link on screen that you can go to in order to potentially win one of these products, or like I said earlier, get it with one of the gift cards that you could win as well. Everybody is going to win something. So you can go to the link that I have right on here on screen, or you can go down to the description to find a clickable version of that same link. And remember, everybody wins something, so you can't go wrong, no matter what. So again, thank you, Belissa, our awesome friends, for sponsoring this giveaway, and we hope that everybody is able to enjoy a little something from them and us. Self-care. So again, thank you to Balesa for teaming up with us again to bring you uh, a little bright spot. We're in February. We're just ready for it to be spring already. So make sure you go over there and uh, get that taken care of. Today, unfortunately for all of us, all of us, we will be discussing Bethany and she is interviewing someone about self-care. Except- Topical. We, now we don't call it that, we call it something else because if we call it something else, then Jesus says it's okay. So stay tuned for what you can call it so you don't have to worry about going to hell and being a harlot. New vocab just dropped, let's go. Let's do a little transition and we'll get it going. 
Okay, if you are new around here, you might not know who Girl Defined is. If you aren't new, you're Sorry. probably sick of hearing it. But here we are again. They've just got some really, really fun and interesting things to say. This is just one half of Girl Defined. This is Bethany Beal. But uh, let's see what they have for us today. Bethany looks like a zombie compared to this woman. <laughs> <laughs> Francie, thank you so much for joining me on the Girl Defined show. I am a huge fan, and anyone who follows me or Girl Defined... I literally have never heard of this person. Is she recording in her bedroom? Yes, they always do. Does she have a folder to hit herself in the face with? <laughs> we knows that I am such a huge fan of you and Heaven in Your Home, your podcast and your ministry, and just everything you do to help married women and single women thrive in God's incredible design for their sexuality and for their marriage. And Bethany, wh where's this passive income going if it's not to your earbuds? You still using wired? All this passive income and you're still using wired wired headphones. She looks like interesting. the cover of the like the cartoon drawing on the little house of the prairie books. Like the little girl. She's got the weird headband I'm not and the giant enough. fluffy plaid dress, and she's blonde. Somebody out there is going to know because I, I have no clue. <laughs> Straight out of Little House of the Prairie. Little House on the Prairie. That much yeah, I do know. That. All of that. But for the few who may not know you, can you just share the with few. The few. You who you are, where you're from, Everybody. family, all the things? Yeah, so I am a mother of six. My husband and I live with our kiddos right outside of Washington, D.C. I would hope and you so live it's with a your busy kids. time of life. Our oldest is 14, almost 15, and our youngest is four. And so we're just doing all the things. I'm like a professional Uber driver. Um, I never went to Uber driver. That doesn't get tipped, doesn't get paid. I like, you know, get paid in hugs, and I appreciate that, Ew. especially my teenagers. We just get just the tip over here. Um, it's a sweet, it's a sweet stage of a lot of activity, but in my windows of free time, I really get a lot of life from doing the podcast called Heaven in Your Home, that um, where we talk about sex, marriage, and the mission of God, and how it all feeds into the big picture of God's heart. I thought she was going to say <laughs> the missionary, They're, God. I stand by this, especially now that Paul and Morgan have opened their big mouths and are talking about these things again. Nobody talks about sex more than fundies. It's crazy. Literally no one. Yeah. I mean, we talk about this with uh, how, how people act in Mormon weddings. Like, everybody is basically just, like, waiting and excited for you to do it. And they make it awkward all night. It's Because you weird. have, like, your dinner and shit, and everybody comes up to you, and they're like, are you excited? I'm like, why are you talking oh, to me about this, you freaking sicko? You guys are freaks what is your problem heaven to earth that our bodies have meaning that our bodies are theological our gender has what? meaning and that actually married sex is a really powerful supernatural gift <laughs> and it's kind of my journey i'm not a sex therapist i'm not a counselor I'm so uh, so bethany is a zombie <laughs> Just a wife and a mom and really a lover of Jesus who has been on this journey to find his heart in this. Don't ever define yourself as just uh, anything. I notice that women do this a lot. They'll be like, I'm just a wife. I'm just a mom. Like you are a wife. You are a mom. Like we don't have to but discredit those things. You're not only things. those things. Because it's not that they're important. But see, misogyny and patriarchy were like, we would never say he's just a dad. Yeah. He's just a provider of income. And um, realizing that he's actually calling me to do this more. And so I'm trying to say yes to him. This was not my dream. I didn't always think I'd be in the this grift, Say yes to Jesus. But the grift is calling. Been, um, a sweet journey because I've seen him healing me and I've seen him healing others just by sexually truth. Because the truth really does set us free. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so give us a little <laughs> glimpse of. So Bethany and mm -hmm. her sister Kristen, they've written uh, a few books, but in s one of the ones that we actually own, they detail how everybody is sexually broken, like innately. So when they say, "Oh, you need sexual healing," it's because 
naturally you're wrong you're broken and yeah not the song the song is much better listen to that you and your husband like your marriage your sex life because you've been very open on heaven in your home kind of like that journey so can you give us the snapshot of kind of where you were when you first got married tell us about your sex life are today and just the growth that's taken place. bethany needs yeah. to turn the gain up a so um oddly enough bit, when actually. i look back at my story i realized wow god was writing a story because i was in high school and just really decided i want to be captivated by jesus it was really him asking me will you be <laughs> captivated by me more than anything else and of course, I had like a really cute high school boyfriend who was in a Christian band and <laughs> he was like, what's captivated your heart? What do you think about when you wake up in the morning, when you go to bed at night? And I'm like, it's him. Yes. And the Lord is like, I want to be that. And so my journey with having a wholehearted love for Jesus started young and bled into my sexuality because I realized I'm going to give this. That was a poor choice of words. Is this a thing? Is boy to God and I'm going to follow him and I'm going to let go of him and I'm going to give Jesus my whole heart. And so it was right in the purity culture and, maybe and a I little was for more. sure raised in the thick of the purity culture, but I don't think that, um, I think it was more just the silence. And so when I got married at a very young age, at age 20, it had been wow. kind of just, yeah, I was like, <laughs> don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Was wow. The <laughs> I wish we could isolate that. <laughs> Unfortunately, like, she was talking over. It's the, it's the, wow. wow. <laughs> it's the gift of that wow. kid at the party. Wow. And when I got married or it came to get married, I'm like, I got to do it. And I don't know how to do it because I had just shut it down for so long. And I don't know, not only know how to do it, but I not know how to do it. I don't know how to think about it, which yes. was probably more of the barrier um, was I had just kind of disintegrated myself, disconnected myself from my body and my femininity because I thought it was a little bit dangerous or a little yeah. bit of a a stronghold for others, for guys, for me. And I really just wanted to love Jesus. And so I thought I'd love him with my whole heart, but what about my body? And what about my genitals? And what about my femininity? <gasps> and what about nakedness? How do I find God in that? And how, how do, do I, I find okay God in I, my nakedness? I, this is a concept that I cannot grasp. Even Mormons kind of distance themselves from this. Dude, I don't know though. I feel like that's not necessarily the truth. I think we were just, I don't know. I feel like we were kind of weird because that was not. Well, I mean, they, they, they talk about like with your decision in having kids, it being between you, your partner and the Lord. Yeah, but I've never but heard like, them I, talk about it like this. I know, right? I, because um, it had been such a non-conversation. So I think that was where I started. It required a lot of inner healing work, honestly, a lot of work with the Holy Spirit to identify lies that I had believed about my body, uh, places where I was really agreeing with shame rather than God's proclamation that you are good, your body is good. God, I, I wonder where that fucking shame is coming from. So it's weird. definitely not people like Bethany who are telling people that you're innately sexually broken from birth. It's crazy. Wonderfully and wonderfully made. I had to figure out what I was agreeing with in my heart and um, took a lot of work to be able to press into God in that and also to share that with Wyatt. And we ended up realizing that um, sex was a big deal to him. He was a division one athlete. <laughs> really? Never would have guessed. So he had like lots of testosterone at that wow, time. Oh, like, I didn't know that. Yeah, he was a D1 basketball Men player. have so much testosterone. Okay, but we'll see if Bethany talks about this because she supposedly was like being recruited for a basketball team, remember? She was telling <laughs> she people She has to stories. bring up those little anecdotes. We'll see. Player. And so he kind of had this fear of like, I hope I'm not too much for her. Like, what if? Because he was aiming for purity. He was really trying to um, hold on tight for marriage and God had redeemed his past. <laughs> and so he was knew the power of a sex drive, but also yeah. was a little bit scared of like, is this going to be too much for my wife? I don't want to overwhelm her or stress her out with what feels like such a real physical need or desire. And we can talk about need later, but um, that was kind of where we started. And so we ended up spending a lot of time on our pink inner healing couch, which if you listen to episode one in my podcast, I tell this whole story. But just asking God, Lord, come in. Bethany is literally going to explode. 
Like her <laughs> shit is gonna explode because she can't talk about herself. She's like that meme of SpongeBob where he's like holding it in. <laughs> where he's afraid, where I'm afraid, where he's insecure, where I'm insecure. And so it was months of allowing God to sift through the issues of our heart, lots of repentance, lots of uh, uprooting lies and asking God to plant tr seeds of truth in those places. And then Fuck. I Mons think what was truth. powerful is that we didn't just stop on the couch to pray. We went to the bedroom and we made what was spiritual in our relationship physical. So the spiritual oneness we were experiencing, we then went and made love and it was a compound effect that we realized there's so much power in oneness and nobody had told. That was like the thing, that was one of the things that I could not get. So we get married, right? And then immediately after the weird ceremony, the guy's given his little his little thing, and he's talking about how that night we're gonna kneel down together for the first time as spouses. I was like, ain't no way I'm gonna get on my knees for the Lord after. <laughs> I must have this, blocked that out. You must have, because I remember it specifically. I was like, there's not a chance I was that I'm going to do that. I was actively dissociating. Not because... <laughs> That's weird. Not because of McKay, but because of the fact that we were sitting in Mormon temple garb with fucking green aprons over our ridiculous outfits while everyone around us sat in regular normal outfits while we yeah. kneeled across an altar and held hands. <sighs> yep. That's a fun experience. Fun time. Love that. Just that we had kind of heard it's a man's need and um, in indirectly kind of it's a woman's duty and we're trying to figure uh. that out. But it was like God was blowing us out of the water with a better story. <laughs> and we're, <laughs> we're never going to make it through. Reminding us there's a better story here than a man's need and a woman's duty. There's a, a higher narrative. There's a more beautiful picture. And there's actually a tangible goodness that happens in your home when a husband and a wife pursue oneness and self-giving love and mutual pleasure. And there is something of that a heaven and earth overlap that Pure. happens. And so that was kind of our journey. We were sniffing that out the first few years, oh realizing there's something powerful here. Stop. We were having a lot of sex and we were realizing the more, the more, the more we were pursuing this intimacy, spiritually and physically, there was a sense, a thin place of heaven and earth in our room, in our home, in our connection. It's like coffee pot tenderness, this goodness. And um, it kind of reset all what? of those old patterns. And Not from friendly. then I got really deep into studying the theology of this and then the physiological nature of sex and all of the stuff. So that was that was where we began. And wow. we are um, 17 years into marriage and it just keeps getting better. It, the orgasms get better. The is freedom. She, she's man. She is. She's a little liberal for Bethany. In my I opinion. know. Like she just said the O word. Yeah, God forbid. Better, the surrender, the trust, um, and the power of it. The power of it to be like a high, high, and like so fun and passionate. And we've known low, times that are so low, and we are so broken, and we've had physical sickness. We've had trauma in our home, and sex has been a gift in all of those things. It's been there when we've been unwell, when we've been well, when we've needed comfort. If you're unwell uh, and you I'm don't want to have sex, don't do it. Let's just caveat that. Yeah when we've been celebrating when we've been like both have COVID and cough drops in our mouths and we're like we're gonna glue ourselves together like in the hard times and when real what? life hits if you <laughs> Mima just died <laughs> let's go to the bedroom let's hit the hay <laughs> rest in peace Mima. <laughs> if you if you so much as came near me when I had COVID I would have fucking <laughs> Drop kicked you me. out of the window, let alone it tried to. Yeah, you get would have to do that without with passing out, though. So I cannot believe that's crazy. Well, I don't know. Oh God, Was anybody no. else getting it on when they had COVID? Let us know in the comments. Sex has been a powerful gift to be able to remind us of that garden dream in Genesis 1 that God places image on the body of a male. Because Adam and Eve were fucking. Let's, let's not talk about Adam and Eve in relation to sex because then we have to confront the idea that there was a lot of. They were step siblings, okay? <laughs> Eve is out there like, what are you doing, step bro? Oh my God, stop. This is getting so restricted. <laughs> you brought it up. You brought it up. Email. Commanded them, be fruitful, multiply, and take dominion 
from a place of oneness and unity and love. And so our fruitfulness as parents, as disciple makers in the world, as workers, whatever we're doing has a lot to do with our pursuit in our home of unity and oneness. And so it's in the highs and the lows, and there's just so much fruit with it and so much evidence of God's goodness through it. And just hearing you talk, I'm like, yes, you know, the way you talk so freely and openly, like I'm used to it now because I've listened to like yeah. probably every single one of your episodes, you know, every single one of your episodes on your Heaven in Your Home podcast and anyone I talk to who's like getting married or about to get Definitely married, I'm like, like oh, you please have to help. episode one and listen. The all- amount of times that she's said the title of the podcast instead of just referring it to your podcast, it makes me feel like she hasn't listened. I feel like I would do that if I hadn't <laughs> like really experienced somebody's <laughs> content, I would make sure that I keep sl- like slipping it in there the way through but just hearing Mm -hmm. you know you talk so freely about sex and the body and the spiritual and all of that i know it's getting more common for christians to speak in that way but you know before i found you at your besties honestly i hadn't heard like a christian married woman speak so honestly and freely and bring in all of the beautiful aspects like the emotions and the body and the hard times and the great times and all, all of that. And so I know the sisterhood right now as they're listening, they're like, whoa, you know, this is amazing. And they actually mm-hmm. submitted a ton of questions for you. And we could okay. literally talk for, you know, five hours about all these. But I tried to pick the ones that kept coming up. So different people were asking the same ones. And you are the perfect person to answer these questions because they are very direct. They are very open. No. <laughs> And they're all anonymous, so they. Really- is, I will not elaborate. <laughs> Just I will no. not elaborate. I. I mean, you know, if you've got experience in this situation, you have experience in this situation. But sometimes, some things just apply to you in your relationship, and sometimes there are people who are better qualified to talk in more broad terms. True. That ain't me. So. I am a sex therapist to ask them no names attached and i know these apply to a lot of women so we're actually going to jump in and get your wisdom on some of these questions so question number one that we got from one of bethy found an excuse to use a question box on instagram am i surprised not in the slightest sure the girl to find sisterhood members she says where did my libido go the second I got married. I was a virgin. And I re- I'm like, yes. I was a virgin. <laughs> yes, thank you. Me too. It's like, why you hear that? That happens. Like, oh, I have this super high sex drive, and then I get married, and I'm like, okay, I never want this again. So what's your take on that? Ooh. That breaks my heart I because it's so common, and especially, I think, sadly, maybe in the Christian world, there's a few things happening. I think one is... Um, we kind of have this narrative, like if you wait, then it will be great. And so it's kind of setting you up for something that may not Thank be Thank you for being able to recognize this. newlywed sex is not as great as 10 years in, as 20 years in. You That's know, if fair. You Real growing, talk. Because you keep growing in trust, in yeah. vulnerability, in healing. And those are the things that are required for great sex. You have to have trust. You have to be able to be naked and unashamed. You have to be able to articulate what it is that you're really afraid of and that other person can know you in that place. That's intimacy. And then sex is a type of intimacy that complements that and makes that even better. So all that to say, just knowing, okay, having a great sex life is a process and it's not going to be like the best sex you've ever imagined and can ever have the first night or even the first month or the first year. Because I remember also as a newlywed things started coming up right after the wedding. I'm like, whoa, who did I marry? Why did I do this? (laughs) You know, like, what what did I just do? Hmm. Because suddenly it is just so vulnerable and you realize I have nothing in between me and this person and our hearts are- Damn! Get this lady a Trojan sponsorship. Jesus. (laughs) And so we ran to Jesus. I'm not sure what you do if you don't run to Jesus, but we ran to Jesus to- I run away. Run to Jesus. What's that? What's that TikTok? Hey, don't run from the Lord. All I could think of was that one Flock of Seagulls song. I think that's a Flock of Seagulls song. We have so many gifts for this episode right now. 
help us navigate that and for him to be our covering together. But back to what happened in my Lido the second libido the second you get married, I think one of the things we do when we date is we make out and we have passionate like fondling or whatever line you Whoa. have drawn. Yeah. You feel lots of arousal because you can't go all the way. And so you're doing all these other things that your body actually needs for arousal. Your body needs time for arousal. It needs kissing. It needs some neck kissing. It needs some caressing. There's a word it for that. It's called foreplay. for your um, vagina to lubricate. It needs time for um, Explicit. blood flow to come into your genitals so that you open up and you soften and you um, are ready for entry and you have that <laughs> desire of like I want you in real talk though this is this is like the... <laughs> a positive thing that that fundies need it's true honestly. she is she's not spouting complete nonsense I mean I, I agree with a lot of the things that she said and I think that's why this video isn't doing well <laughs> People don't want to hear it like this. They want to hear that they're sexually broken. Well, and overweight losers. Girl Define has made a whole platform on it. So. I know. Now, now they're in their reparations era and it's not going so hot. Yes. Okay, we're just going to be right on it. Yes. So that is the feeling when you're making out and you have a lot of floor foreplay. But sometimes I feel like when we get married, it's almost like we just switch for all of that and we just go for sex. And we're like, well, that's kind of elementary and now we just got to go have sex. And if we lose all that foreplay and all of that fun intimacy before and then we suddenly are just like all about the deed, we're sometimes not giving our body what it actually had been getting earlier and was ready and aroused. We need to kind of incorporate all of that. I think that's one big part of it. I think another part is just being able to be open and honest with where you are and know that it's a process and have expectations lowered a little bit. That it's if I w had COVID, I would be open and honest and say, my head fucking hurts and I feel like if I'm not covered by a blanket, I am going to turn into an ice cube. I'm gonna start coming up with like, she said ready for entry and that makes me think like the national park entrance so you gotta like buy a ticket and yeah. the gates close at a queue. certain hour <laughs> i mean it's it's not the worst it's not the worst analogy i've ever heard i'm gonna be the best thing you've ever experienced the first time because you're learning something new yes. um yes. and i think also just the process of getting to know what feels good yeah. and you're not going to be able to read each other's minds and so if you have kind of a yeah that was not that great no that's totally fine and that's totally normal you get to grow it and i think yeah. that's one thing i emphasize a lot in my podcast is the gift of growing your sex life it is not an automatic it's something that requires work and it requires getting to know your body and sometimes that takes some some practice to get to know your body and what feels good and also how to communicate what feels good and so that's I mean, this kind of flies in the face of everything that Bethany and Kristen talk about, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, what she's, I mean, we all know what she's referring to right now. Because if you don't know how, we've, we've said the same thing. You know, if you don't know how to do it for yourself and you don't know what feels good for yourself, it's going to be extremely challenging to be able to tell a partner for how a partner. to do that. Yeah. So, but we know how. I mean, how long ago was it that Kristen posted that video about touching herself? She recorded it in the car. It wasn't that long ago. I don't I don't recall, honestly. But it's not like this is like a new position that they've adopted. No. But apparently maybe they do. I don't know. Who knows? Part of the joy of it is that you get to grow. It's not an automatic thing. Yeah, yeah. well, okay, something's so growing. I have to ask because you said get to know your body and that... I'm telling you, like, until I heard you talk about that, I've been married for four years. Until I heard you talk about that, I just thought, like, okay, that is, like, terrible. Dude, I've been married longer than Bethany. I, yeah, it just clicked in my head. I was like, what the fuck? You would never, like, how do you even get to know your body? What is that? Like, no, 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 you know? So can you explain yeah. what you're talking about and how that can be helpful? Yes. Okay. So, um, I, again, I'm not a counselor. I'm not she was ready for that. She was like, mm, girl let me tell you yes sex therapist i'm just gonna tell you my story so my journey i, I like i'll just be your big sister and we can yes, just you know, so we need that yeah sift through it and 
because apparently <laughs> Bethany's <laughs> actual big sister is of no help, I guess. So Ouch. much shade. Poor Ouch. Kristen. Um, I say talk, talk to your pastor, but maybe not talk to your pastor. I'm going to... Don't. <laughs> Please don't. Especially if it's a man. Because we all know how that works for us. That will back up what I'm saying. But anyway, I think... So here's the breakdown is that we spend a lot of years believing that masturbation is wrong. And so any self-touching is wrong. Don't do it. And there yeah. is no scripture A that says masturbation <sighs> Listen is up, Mormons. It's wrong. However, there are lots of reasons to be very cautious about what it is to be involved in that act. And so that is for another conversation. But I think self-cultivation is what I like to call it is different than masturbation. I told you, they're just calling it something else. Self if you're telling me right now that all it took for Bethany to be like, cool, I can do that, was for some weird ass Christian woman to spout things that everybody else has been saying, all the people who have education about these things has been saying, right. but it takes a Christian person to be like, if we just call it something else, it's self cultivation. Fine. It's I'm self cultivating. It's not touching yourself. It's self cultivating. Self like, like why did self uh, exploration not make the cut? Because you <clears throat> might explore your way into a situation. In this situation, honestly, she's not the weirdest of the God Squad. I'm gonna dub them that we talk about here on this channel: Bethany and or Girl of Vine and Nate and Sutton and Paul and Morgan. She's, She's spouted the least amount way of nonsense better I've than ever everybody seen else. so far. So. Masturbation. Masturbation is touching for like for stimulus and for orgasm by yourself, for yourself, in a secretive, isolated way. Self-cultivation is a... <laughs> What? She, the way that she's like, that's by yourself in private, and then she's going over to the other side. It's like, you're going to be on a registry... <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Way Just to kidding. get to know your feminine body so that A, you love it and you think it's good and you like it and you're comfortable with it and you are aware of it and you're educated about what is where and what is down there. I had no education about my body, no idea what was down there. I mean, I hear a lot of- Fun fact, I read a book um, called Come As You Are by Emily Nagoski and she talked about in that book that there, they did research. Um, I can't remember if it was in that book or if it was something else, but- Basically, they took a bunch of women and took pictures of their vulvas and then asked them to identify theirs on the wall or however they did it. That's crazy. Amidst other ones for scientific purposes. You pervert. So, and not me. most, not you, most oh, women sorry, were not able to identify their own. And so I thought that was interesting. Interesting. Men get married, they're like, I didn't know I had a clitoris. The husband yeah. doesn't know. And so if you don't know about your body, it's hard to be able to share your body. It's kind of like you have a really special gift, but it just stays in the corner and you never even opened it. And so you can't really share it with anyone because you were too scared of it. And your body is a gift and God has given it to us and we don't have to be scared of it. And so self-cultivation is simply just kind of like self-education. You can think of it that way, getting to know your body. You can touch yourself down there in order to be like, okay, this stroke, this way feels good. And then the point <laughs> is then you go teach your husband. Yeah. Oh, but he can't God. read your mind. And yes. sometimes in the moment, there's a little bit of like awkwardness and um, it's sometimes a blessing. <laughs> Bethany's like, side-eye Dave. Hop to it, Dave. Um, and this is something you can talk about with your husband. It's not something you do secretly or alone. But self-cultivation is just a word that I like. It's kind of gentle. And right. Are you supposed to do it on the couch in the living room? Or Well, that's what I'm thinking. Understand. So, like, is self-cultivation just, like, mutual masturbation or having the other person watch? That's kind of weird. The act isn't weird, but the way that she's describing it in that, oh, it's not supposed to be secretive or whatever... Like, you can't have a moment alone in the shower to do this? Or it's, what's the deal? All it is is mental gymnastics. That's all it is. And it's a way to cultivate growth and to cultivate a reality that your body is good and to come into alignment with that. And it is a good gift that you don't need to be scared of. And so I think that, um, I think even just, yeah, I think just practicing. Sometimes I, 
found a lot of comfort in just being in the bathroom alone, like taking a bath or a shower and just even blessing my body while I'm bathing. And thank you, God, for my beautiful body and all the ways that it serves me. So, is it, so it can just be by yourself. I don't that's what she just there's a couple herself. different a couple different threads I'm i trying know to follow here i just it just really gets the juices flowing when i ask jesus to bless my body before we do the nasty <laughs> this is what you get for making please, me film after work please bless these fluids that are about to be exchanged <laughs> And my family, my arms that hold babies, my breasts that have fed babies, my tummy that's carried, you know, and even if you haven't had you babies, know what your body is working to. What? That gives literally the initiatory right? ceremony in the temple. Your arms that they might hold babies, your breasts that they might feed babies. What is the, I'm trying to think of what. The washing and anointing? Yeah. Your lips that they may never speak guile, your shoulders that they may bear the burdens that. placed upon them, that your, your bowels may perform proper function, something, something, something. Very similar. Temple it's kind ritual. Of, kind of interesting. Serve others. Your body is working to glorify God all the time, and your hands are serving, your feet are serving. Dude, and my, bo I my body <laughs> is definitely not glorifying God, it is offending him. <laughs> <laughs> we just feel really disconnected from a few parts of our body that we're afraid of. And so if you can get in the shower and bless your body and say, God, thank you for the beauty of this body. That's another step into getting to know your body is even to come into agreement with the fact that it sounds like good. a Megan the Stallion song or like a Mariah Carey song. Bless this body. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get us claimed. <laughs> what was I going to say? Oh. We're, we're we're done glorifying our body for god we're we're gonna make him ashamed for <laughs> being the guy who's watching all the time it's like the big you know all of what you just described to, for me seriously for though turn the even, fucking like, you know, game up three years of my marriage it was like oh no 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 no, you know and so when i started listening to you and then <laughs> so last year <laughs> <laughs> digging deeper and digging into resources you recommended that has been such a helpful practice and just a way to not like okay i'm just gonna i go into you know the bedroom and here are the things that i'm like this robot it's like no like, i am a body and i have these beautiful aspects of me and i have so much to offer and i have so much to bring and i don't just even have to wait for him to like okay know everything and okay he better touch me here and he'd better touch me there and oh now he, he doesn't know what to do you know it's like i can bring so much <laughs> mission fail we'll get him next time <laughs> and so much just confidence and more security and even more of my own like eroticism like i have something to bring and this is a good thing i would so no we're moving I'm on we're really, moving on really glad you touched on that i do have another question though, i'm that so glad she touched I, on I that i honestly have no idea what you're gonna say. I muted it. <laughs> I I don't know. I mean, I've only been married for four years. Like I said, <laughs> you've got a lot more years on me. So someone asked about sex toys and intimacy in long distance marriages. This is what we're here for, y'all. Specifically, a military wife. Her husband is serving overseas. I've wondered about this. And she wonders, too. Like, are there rules? Are there guidelines? How does that work? Okay, so when we, oh, we as so Christians loud, are man. dying for permission about everything, and I, I think I heard you say that, I'm like, it's true, like, is this okay, is this okay? You don't, don't need know. permission. We're so afraid. We just need forgiveness. <laughs> so afraid. That's what Jesus died for, right? And I just want to even <laughs> encourage you to bring that to the Lord. Lord, I'm so afraid of getting it wrong. I'm so afraid of sinning or messing up, and just have a conversation with Jesus, first of all, because... I, like our friend Julie Slatter. I'm so afraid that the Hitachi magic wand is going to answer my prayers in ways that you never could. Maybe God directed the creators of the Hitachi or even better, Balesa sex toys. And that is the way that he's gonna bless you. That's his way to This do is it. a blessing. A pink blessing. <laughs> a pink blessing. Talks about like I don't want to tell you what to think. I want to I want to hopefully inspire you how to think or how to engage with God regarding your body and your sexuality because He is your God, He is your Maker, and if you are in Christ, you have the Holy Spirit in you to discern. I guess you. if He's your God, He's your Maker, then I guess He is also the Maker of this. That's true. Indirectly, of course, but you know. So that being said, we know from First Corinthians ten that all things 
are permissible. Not all things are beneficial. I think that's a Holy Spirit conversation. Lord, is this? Oh no! Is she going to turn this on its fucking head right now? Don't ruin a good thing. Help us gain intimacy. Is this violating any of the scriptural principles like being outside of a husband and a wife? Like no other people need to be involved. That's obviously a no-no. And then everybody, I feel like at this point, it's very common sense that pornography is like poison. Like that is yeah. not wise, 100%. That was um, never God's intention to be, you know, encountering sexuality outside of your covenant. And also it's just terrible for your brain. It's terrible for your sexual response. It's bad on every count. So. All those things said. That's not true. Not factual. That's an opinion. It's a hard opinion for a lot of people, but. It's not for everyone. And no. there are compulsive sexual behaviors and pornography can be one of them. But to on the whole be like, it's all bad. It's all terrible. Yeah. You want to talk about the shame that you were just talking about 10 yeah. minutes ago? This is why. Well, I stumbled on upon somebody on TikTok who was talking about it and she w that was like her brand was being anti-porn and her most recent video was like you don't think that your family members are doing it they're all oh because it was talking about the um the deep fake stuff with uh I can't remember her name I think it's cutie cinderella on twitch and he was like she was like Basically saying that oh, oh, all of your male family members are doing this to you. What? I was like, what are you talking? Is that a self -report? Off your rocker, seriously. Yeah, I was like, that is really harmful to just, like, I understand the harm that was done in that instance and how these kinds of situations can be. But to say that everybody is doing that is just really not good it is no. on the other side of the spectrum let's think about sex toys and um i'll just tell you bethany you might be getting free by listening to me but i find other women who are freer than me and i'm like leaning towards them because i yes. still have a ways to go on my freedom journey but i interviewed a woman uh recently she lives named free phyllis hill phyllis and glenn hill they run a ministry called connection codes and she's got more freedom than me so you can look at her because i was yes. like love her wisdom and we were talking about this very thing about sex toys yeah. and she was like crazy think about it and i can share with you my personal journey too but she's like think about it as sex tools instead of sex toys tools that's literally what machinery our stake president told us you don't need tools in the bedroom, lady. It is just playing. Why? It's. I don't know. I think of, we think of sex toys and we think like, eh, like maybe immoral kinky. or kinky yeah. or something that we're just casting judgment on. Because kinky and immoral belong in the same sentence, apparently. Yeah. But the truth is, like, we can be really creative and we can have lots of fun in the bedroom. And it's we can have so much mental gymnastics. We can do it all day. <laughs> Everyone's so creative. <laughs> Isn't that unique? As long as it is mutual and we're both enjoying it and it's building intimacy, the answer is yes. Like, you do what is honoring and okay, loving she didn't throw and it all connecting away. for your union. And it may not be the same thing that somebody else would enjoy, but there's no shame in trying. And I'm gonna give you some examples of sex yeah. tools that might be um, an on-ramp. Uh, sometimes Let's changing hear. your position is really helpful in whether you're pregnant or that whether not a sex you toy. are um, just wanting some variety or trying different positions for lots of reasons. There's no rule on positions. You try a million positions, it's so fun to try to like Not in the butt though. It's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Godly position. It's not know, one godly. Like the most position. spiritual. <laughs> yeah, there's not a spiritual position. All of it is spiritual. God loves all of it. <laughs> <laughs> that is a reach. <laughs> if it, is it, not how I'm doing them. <laughs> if okay, so the theory though is that if God loves it and is blessing it and endorses it, then isn't it just pornography isn't for he God? Technically, watching porn <laughs> all the time. <laughs> <We're on there. laughs> so Stop. bad. We made our bodies amazing and hilarious and fun and adventurous. Fart noises. Um, but sometimes your <laughs> hips can sink if like you're trying to prop your hips up. So there is a sex pillow called the Liberator Wedge. And so it's technically a sex toy, but it is really helpful because it props your hips up and it, you stay in that position. And it is I awesome. I think that's really expensive. You're 
Really? The I think that's one of the more expensive ones is that the one I'm thinking of because somebody told us, like, we have a nugget for our son. <laughs> I used to have it in my classroom when I was a teacher. And we have a nugget and our son plays on it. And somebody told me, I don't remember who it was, but somebody told me that they, like, people... It was Jen. Oh. Wasn't it? Jen. Shout out Jen. Fundy Fridays. Um, That people, like, buy them on the internet for, like, super expensive and shit because they're, like nice sex furniture for fun times so pro tip if the nuggets cheaper you're welcome hit that up like whoa i can feel the stuff i've never felt before because your hips are in a different position and you might even be able to get closer depending on your size like some my husband's like six three and i'm five five so you know and it's just helpful to have saying that lady bethany's like oh Oh, god dave is so short god (laughs) different positions um so up sex pillow vibrators are a common conversation there's nothing immoral or illegal about vibrators i will say this <laughs> except in what state they're illegal somewhere aren't they like illegal in texas uh there's a limit i know for oh a they fact. have a limit you i don't know if have it's like three uh, or something i don't want to say the one word the f- rods i don't know if that, it's that one or the the vibes I'm, i can't remember I did not use a vibrator for 15 years of our marriage. Mm-hmm. It has been introduced to our marriage at this point. I really appreciate it. Let's but go. it is a tool and it's not the only way we connect. Yeah. Um, I'm glad, personally, I didn't use one As for a long time that would be because the bad of thing. this. It gave us time to learn each other. Mm-hmm. Sometimes a vibrator- Okay, lady. They can coexist. And some people can't do it without. And there's no shame in that. There's, n- yeah, let's be clear. Let's there's not nothing shame wrong here. with that. Can kind of skip a step because it is really powerful and it doesn't require him to learn what feels good or how to bring you to orgasm. And it doesn't require you to know your body because it does the work for you. And it kind of takes, it just is one step removed. That's um, and so not I would say vibrators true. are amazing if you've been married for a long time and you haven't reached orgasm. They can help you figure out a little bit more mechanics. Maybe there was um, just a little bit of help needed there. We introduced a vibrator in a time of, of deep sickness, and so we needed a bit of variety to yeah. be able to enjoy more intimacy. And it's been a tool that I okay. like. But you could try any. Sex what, what we got the Rona. Bust out the vibe. <laughs> and keep it forever keep it for one time there's a lot of cheap things out there that are not that really really not that great or effective but don't buy cheap stuff Um, go to balesa they're affordable don't buy the cheap gross stuff yeah that you see on like yeah the dollar tree well do our giveaway and everybody wins stuff right so so we're helping you can win free toys or you can win discounts to, to help you get into that higher bracket of quality. No mental gymnastics tools, needed. right? And so I think we don't have to be afraid. And if you are afraid, talk to the Lord and talk to a trusted friend and say, where's <laughs> say, Jesus? Lord, Jesus, should I get the Demi wand? <laughs> should I get the little sucker one? I can't think of what it's called. <laughs> Which one is it, Jesus? Let me know. This fear stemming from Sincerely because McKay. I think that's the bigger conversation is why am I so afraid? Mm. And is there shame or fear at work in my relationship with my body and my marriage and my sex life? Because it is not a meant it's not meant to be a place where fear and shame are. And if they are there, that's totally fine. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He comes in and illumines and it's part of us being in touch with our sexual story. And that's so is she saying that the the Holy Spirit knows where your clit is? You have is. to know, like, where did oh, I come God. from, and why do I believe what I believe, and what informed me, and what experiences actually really shaped me, whether it was from the world or my wounds, or yeah, it's. I mean, everything you're saying, it's like I hundred percent relate to just the wanting permission and wanting, like, tell me what's okay, tell me what's not okay, you know. And I just love the way you change the language, like even sex sex tools, like it totally changes the entire perspective and outlook like oh i can actually make these decisions and i can like we can be prayerful about this for ourselves like some white christian lady told me to call it a tool instead of a toy and now i'm free it's just it's disappointing that it has to be such like a groundbreaking thing i feel like for so long there have been christians out there like this and 
a lot of these like fundy style Christians are just have been demonizing them for so long. Well, yeah. And now what? we've gotten to a point in a generation where people can be like, you know what? That was really unnecessary. And it was un- unbiblical and all these things to uh, limit ourselves so much. I'm just confused as to why they switched their, and their tune their tune on this so much. Because it's like, this is like a completely antithetical to yeah, everything the that they've that talked about out? or writing. Like, and I get things shift over time, but the thing that annoys me is it's like, okay, so maybe Bethany's at a point in her marriage where her sex life has sucked enough that they're ready to do something about it. And yeah. at no fault well, of and- their own, because they were never given the proper education, experience, tools, anything other than, you know, don't do it up the butt and don't do it with somebody else that's not your spouse. But yeah, it's like... <sighs> So she's finally at a point where she wants to do things differently. So suddenly Girl Defined is okay yeah. with self-cultivating. Well, that, like it, obviously it, I am glad for her and for their relationship yeah, and everything. Great. That's a net positive. But at the same time, they're at a low point in their quote unquote ministry. I call it a grift. And it feels like it's an, just an evolution of the grift, and they're just gonna pretend like they didn't do the harmful shit. And um, well, and it's just kind just of vibing now. Literally, it just goes against like everything that they've talked about because they're like, you know, go to the Lord with these things and ask the yeah. Lord. So, like Bethany, why are you asking this random white lady instead of the Lord? <laughs> like what? Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, we do want growth and things like that, but you got to acknowledge the things that were wrong that you did before. And telling people that they're all sexually broken, it's just, it's not chill. Uh, It's just common sense in so many ways. That is extremely helpful. You did mention illness and using a vibrator during that time. Someone had a specific question about how to deal with like a low libido and just like sexual, like disconnect during an illness. So with you know in your experience and having walked through that how did you stay connected and pursue sexual like intimacy during that time well there are lots of types of illnesses that can affect sex life your sex life in a lot of different ways and i will just say that um sometimes i think we have minimized um what we define as (laughs) (laughs) why did she do it like that (laughs) I'm just <laughs> X as one act, the P and the V, if you know what I mean. Like that is sex. Thank you. But <laughs> sexual not intimacy can look gated. like a lot of things. Let's say you're on pelvic rest and you are having a baby and you are struggling and you can't I don't know if that's your story or not. I know you're getting ready to have a baby, but many people well, I had are so on so much caring with my first one and it was a whole experience. So yeah. Right, right. And so maybe post postpartum or maybe in your pregnancy you can't have sex or whatever, but how do you stay sexually intimate? Well, you have like head to toe access, like your whole body is beautiful and women have 11 or more erogenous zones all throughout their whole body. You haven't listened to my um, series on your wonderful female body. I did like a bunch of sessions this summer because I just kept going. I'm like, our bodies are so amazing. Oh, and so, yeah, that's amazing. I talk about erogenous zones in that one and think about creatively, how can we express sexual love like this naked and unashamed love that we have that only we share in this season if there's illness. So it may be that a husband is unable to have an erection. There might be some medical problems. There might be depression, anxiety. If he's on medicine for that, that could be a problem. OK, I was in just thinking patient. COVID. I'm glad she <laughs> got double headed dragon over here. How do we uh, continue to do it? <laughs> I want to like, hey, we're going to stimulate each other in different ways or you he can stimulate you and that can be very gratifying for him because he doesn't feel like he's a failure or you can give each other sensual massages. So I would say always trying to find ways to stay sexually connected mm-hmm. because there are so many um, hormones that happen even through our body by God's good design of oxytocin and dopamine and vasopressin, which all are bonding hormones and make you feel close to your spouse. And I'm not even joking, like we've been sick this whole semester of just common colds, viruses, flus. It's it's just been the viral there. load in our house is so thick, you just don't even want to come over. <laughs> Having Why would she, 
The way she used load and thick in the oh same God. sentence. Six kids, it doesn't stop. But we, we laugh. We're like, we have cough drops in our mouth, but we are having, we're being intimate because we we fight for it because it's about. She's mentioned that twice now. That's like a thing now. That's like. Cough drops in your mouth? Yeah. It's like we pop try rocks. That. Don't recommend that. Dang. That's not... Are you speaking from experience? No, I'm just... Oh, okay. People do these things, and I'm like, that's not a good thing to get in your... Nether regions. Nether regions, because there are things out there that are... No, I think there were... I don't know. Maybe not. Designed for that, because that's a food product. And we all know about platinum for genes and phs okay so we ain't gonna disrupt the balance with food that's not meant to go in there so right. thank you it's not about a sexual release necessarily it's not about a check mark on our calendar because we should we choose connection at. because of how it should tiffany from not enough nelson's at paul morgan at the atmosphere of our relationship and our home and so even in seasons of illness where we weren't able to do exactly everything we used to do, we found ways to be sexually intimate because it matters to our connection and it bears fruit in terms of our grace for each other, our softness to each other, even our ability to emotionally connect is often enhanced by sexual connection that we've had because it, it feeds on each other. It's not one above the other. It's all connected. And in a marriage specifically, there's so many things pulling at you. You can always be talking about the kids, the schedule, the bills, but this sexual connection kind of turns out, like dims all those other things and the lights come up on love and closeness. And that is powerful, especially in a season of illness when you need that, you need that comfort and that closeness. So I would just say think outside of the box, um, know that there are a lot of ways. If that makes you feel better when you're ill, then I highly encourage you to do that. If that doesn't make you feel better, then don't do that shit. This is coming from me, Jordan, the wise minky. <laughs> the minkied matriarch. How about that? <laughs> to be sexually intimate, get good at doing hand jobs on <gasps> each other and using your whole bodies to be yes. able to say, I love you. We are together in this and we are expressing love and pleasure in the best way we can right now. And this mm. probably won't be forever, but we're leaning into connection now. Yeah, that's so good. Okay, specifically, let's jump into orgasms because that I feel like is, especially in Christian circles, nobody wants to say that word. And even people who will like DM me or even, you know, post this in the question box, they, it's like, ah, uh, you know, like, it. I don't want to say this, Please but I, say I do want to ask about this. And even as someone who just got married four years ago and I felt like I did have access to a lot of good resources, I look back and I'm like, there was so little talk about this and even in some I really hope you weren't in the know about these good resources because uh then you'd bungled it with your fucking books. The married woman I talked to, it's like the orgasm conversation was just like, okay, that's we just don't talk about that. And so I appreciate the women who have asked specific questions about this. One asked how to learn to orgasm and feel more pleasure. She's feeling the connection with her husband, maybe that emotional connection or spiritual connection, but that physical like uh, pleasure, she's just not experiencing. So for the woman who has never had an orgasm, how can you learn that? And how do you even know what to look for? Yeah. She talking about okay, herself. Well, um, I will give you some of my tips, but I'm going to give you a book straight up right now. Yes, this thank is you. called Unlock Your Orgasm by Bonnie Burns. She's one of the women on the Christian sex, Christian sex chat. Uh, okay. Do you know that book? Christ, uh, that no. website, Christian sex chat. Um, anyway, it's like four or five. I think they're older women and it, I appreciate it so wow. much. That's Christian awesome. sex. Chat. Older women have sex and experience pleasure. What the fuck? Sweet Jesus. Oh my God. I think it's what it's called. Anyway, it's a podcast and she's one of the authors. She has tons of wisdom. And um, I've just appreciated that book so much because it is taking you from pre-orgasmic to yes. orgasmic. And so if you don't know anything. Bethany, pay really attention. What are you doing? Learning about your body. It she's really writing does. notes it down. It begins with your mindset. It begins with understanding. I can with see a bra strap. A, you have to come into agreement if your God. body is good. Jordan, she listened to you. <laughs> Are we magic? <laughs> it's like our she knew. Our are connected to our brains and our brains inform our bodies of 
what to do. And then our bodies also inform our brains. And so it's this, it's this cycle of if we're tense and if we're tight and if we're afraid and anxious, our brains are going to shut down and we'll be anxious. And so even just taking some deep breaths, doing a few Kegels to kind of get blood flow to your genitals, realizing, okay, this body is good. If you do a Kegel, if you don't know what that is, it's when you're peeing and you stop midstream. <laughs> do not do that. Do not do that. My pelvic floor therapist was like, do not do that. To stop your stream? Yes. That is not something you're supposed to do. People think that for some people it's appropriate, right? But there's like this idea that if you like Kegel enough, like especially if you're pregnant, that like your birth will go smoother. And my pelvic therapist told me my pelvic floor therapist told me that sometimes kegling too much can actually tense the pelvic floor too much to the point that it actually makes it worse. Yo. So if you don't really have any reason to be like intensely kegling, like on the regular, like don't be doing that. Also don't be stopping your stream. There are some really good pelvic floor therapists like on TikTok and on Instagram and shit. Maybe I'll find I'll link them in the description, but don't, just take random medical advice from people, especially when it comes to your pelvic floor. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. And you hold your pee in for a second. That's the motion of a Kegel. An orgasm is like a really fast series of those. And it's so fast, those contractions are so fast that you feel a ton of pleasure. It's kind of funny, you think of like vaginal contractions when you're having a baby, that does not feel good. But there's a lot of other things happening, but the contraction is the yeah. fast, it's like ultra fast squeezing of those muscles. I thought it was your uterus that contracted during birth i mean that makes sense to me i, I don't know. know i was and then also stimulation <laughs> of your clitoris that is attached to thousands of nerve endings it is recent and this is not just a christian thing bethany the world doesn't talk about women's sexual health and she's New York right Times there came out with an article just this fall that was like the clitoris has been rediscovered basically even the worldly doctors all the wow. studies mostly sexual studies have been done on men very little if any sexual studies on women and even the i wonder why that be, would be accurate but why worldly doctors <laughs> are we serious right now they're literally just doctors they're just doctors and if you have to specify that it's a christian doctor um please stop there are good Christian doctors who don't tell people that they're Christians and are good doctors. Yeah. So there Doesn't are also need to be part of the credentials. Good non-religious doctors who you would never know their religion because it's inappropriate to fucking ask somebody that. Doesn't need to be part of your uh, your visit. It's not a there requirement so for care. And new studies done, and it shows there used to be eight thousand nerve endings. Now there's realized ten thousand nerve endings wow. in the clitoris. A man's penis has 4,000 nerve endings. So <laughs> the Damn. good news is, and the good news of how God designed you as the pinnacle of creation, as a woman in the garden who was called Eve, life-giving, beautiful. It's ironic because it sounds like God likes women more, but then men just came in and you're like, 4,000, you gave this bitch 10,000, I'm gonna punish More. women for life. I'm gonna punish women. A woman, you have so much capacity for pleasure. It's actually unending there there was a study that was done where a woman was able to orgasm this is might really overwhelm people for like 11 hours okay <laughs> the point wow. of that just stopped because she got tired the point of that is to tell you there is not a limit labor. to how much pleasure you can have our good god does i would be so embarrassed <laughs> i watched an episode of something on it once and you that way Women are able to have multiple orgasms, which means like you climax and then you take a few minutes and you do it again and you do it. You could go on and on and on. That is the generosity of God and how much goodness. They so Why? if you're only getting one, God doesn't like you very much. Apparently. Is for you. All that said, it's worth taking the time to learn your body because you were designed to receive that. And I just have to throw this in, this theology of the body. Our body and our anatomy declares something true about us yeah. that reflects even God because we're image bearers. Our body shows that we are made to receive. And if you're not sure about that, think about the shape of your vagina. Your body is made to receive. Are we serious right now? It's made to receive seeds of life. It's made to receive pleasure. And so it's part of your God-given um, 
um, blessing that you're made to receive pleasure. It's part of a husband's God-given blessing that he's made strong and to pursue and to initiate. And so sp- sometimes I think women... Explain a strap. <laughs> <laughs> You beat me to it. <laughs> really? Yes. But also, as always, gender binary. It's it's weird how it just sneaks in there. Always. Struggle with receiving and just unwinding. And the, oh, you're built to receive. You can't be with another person who's built to receive. And a person who's built to give can't be with another person who's built to give. Like, and she's like, like he's she a probably strong is not gonna, man. She Big probably, man put uh, me this shit home. <laughs> it's really hard. <laughs> Shit me it on in. It probably won't come up, but you. this is like the setup for conversations like that. Oh and knowing God. this is actually a gift to my husband that I get to receive. And so I think if you're wondering about how to become orgasmic, read that book, Unlock Your Orgasm, because that really, it will give you, I think in the privacy of your home, home, like the courage to get out a mirror and look down there, get to know your body, get to know that it's good. Get what to did know I say earlier? Anatomy and- get out a mirror, look at your vagine. Begin to be able to even verbalize that to your husband. And there's exercises in there on how to um, activate those feelings and how to find positions that feel good, how to communicate what you might want to do with your husband. And it's just a process. But I think I just want to mostly give hope. I can't break down like the 10 steps of becoming orgasmic right here, but there's so much hope because it's what your body was made for. And a lot of it has to do with our mindset. And are we integrating our bodies with a sense of you're good and I want to receive and I'm open. And then it's it's training yourself and training your husband yes. to know because it doesn't always happen automatically. And some women think, oh, is it just vaginal? Because I think we think that thrusting and ejaculation is sex and it's supposed to be a boom like explosion. That's what the movies show. But no, women need external stimulation. They need arousal. They need time. And so it is a little bit more of a process but it's really good and it's a blessing to your husband to be able to explore that with him. Mm-hmm. Well, and you've, t- I mean, you've talked so openly about this on your podcast. It was interesting actually last year, I don't even remember the name of the movie, but it's like some super popular Christmas movie. And <laughs> I didn't actually really even, I didn't really like it, but at one point, you know, they don't won't show anything, but it's like the, you know, the girl and the guy and he comes over and they're like gonna go upstairs and whatever. And she, he asked her, you know, oh, do you like, you know, foreplay? And she's like, oh, I hate foreplay or whatever. Like, I just want to jump right in it. And I'm like, Bethany, it sounds like you downloaded the wrong Christmas movie. I was going to say, what kind of fucking Christmas movie is this? It sounds like you might have downloaded a parody. Okay, this is part of the problem of just like, I don't know, like women, you just basically jump in and you're like, you know, whoa, having all these orgasms. And it's like, you feel as someone who, doesn't necessarily hasn't experienced that you see even just like a small or hear a small line like that in a movie and you're like wow i must be like so broken something must be so wrong with me and it just contributes to the problem because now there it is rears its head back into the conversation what is that that is a capital p projection my friends capital p projection i can't do that which means i'm broken And you can't do that either. So that means you're broken. And so it makes me feel better to know that you're broken too. Now I'm gonna write a book about it. Mentally, there's so much anxiety and so many issues. And so I would really encourage our listeners to go to Francie's podcast, Heaven in Your Home. Obviously we'll link it all, but you have several um, episodes that specifically talk about like your orgasmic potential and just how the process, you know, of reaching an orgasm and how that looks. Um, I think this is probably one of the most asked questions and women, married women want to know about like having an orgasm the most because they feel like that's the thing that's talked about the least. Um, So Mm. kind of building on that, why would you say it is so hard for a woman to have an orgasm? (laughs) Like, I don't know if that's really true, but that's how we feel and we feel like- Bethany, I can literally come up with a million fucking reasons right now, a million. I could sit here for an hour and discuss this. Is it really That's that not very long. hard to think about? It's hard to experience that. And a lot of women haven't ever even experienced that. Yeah. So as, as we're talking, I'm thinking about my real life. 
and my real life is full of kids. Not my pretend demand, life. I am straight up exhausted, right? I just told you, I had a free morning at home. Before we started recording, I'm like, I had a free morning at home. I had all these aspirations. I was going to work out. And you know what I did? I promptly got in my bed after I took my kids to their classes and I slept for an hour and a half. And I set my alarm for 30 minutes great. and I still slept. That is, I think, true of a lot of women. If you have free time, what do you want to do? Like, really, our bodies need to sleep. We're really tired. So being exhausted, being distracted, which, oh, by the way, I'm always, you know, needing to be on Instagram or Amazon or doing something on social media. Like, our brains are always distracted. So we're exhausted, we're distracted, and we're so busy. All those things are really bad ingredients when you want to become orgasmic. Our bodies need to be rested. We need time in a bathtub to breathe, to feel our femininity, to take a deep breath. And it might to feel like- To loosen up with a glass oh, of wine. That's never in my lifetime, but it might help to communicate a few things like that. Hey babe, it would really help me. And that couple that I mentioned, Glenn and Phyllis, they actually had a similar story as to me and Wyatt. I told Wyatt at one point, I'm like, I need a bath. I need alone time because I can't breathe. <laughs> and I can't switch from like being a giver all day to all the people to becoming like an orgasmic, excited wife. Five minutes Receiver. later. Receiver. And so I think there's... Get your paws off me. Go do the dishes, you dumb idiot. That's I'm what she wants I'm hitting to say. the tub, baby. Some parts of it that are lifestyle changes of thinking, let me just care for my body. Let me go slower. Let me rest. Let me maybe put down my phone and pick up an actual novel and just relax into my body so that my brain can come down to a place of being able to receive. So I think that's a big part of it. Quickies are great ideas for busy weeks, but that's not the way to have great orgasms. Yeah. Slower, longer sessions when you have time to explore each other's bodies, to do foreplay, to really just unwind and be present in the moment, those are all real serious ingredients for a bigger self time. And you might also think, oh, that's crazy. Well, the way that my husband and I, who have a very full life, have done it is the last few years, we've opted for hotel dates. Um, and we don't even spend the night, but we go to the hotel from like, four to eight or something like that in the afternoons. And we don't, so we're like home to put the kids in bed, but we need time to get there. Man, that would we be fucking often nice. We'll take a nap, but then we'll just have time to shower slowly, to be present in the moment, to take turns on each other and really enjoy intimacy. And I think that's where our most powerful experiences have, have happened is because we're going slowly measure and it's not done in two seconds and then it's over. We're really taking our time taking, and taking as turns we have gotten being to know each other, the giver and the receiver. Because we know how oh to extend the pleasure <laughs> for each other. Mm, that's so beautiful. I know a big shift in our marriage um, came. <laughs> I don't, I think it was in a book or something, but you know, I, I think I used to come to like, okay, we're going to be intimate or whatever. And it would, I would basically view it like, all right, Dave, it's your job to make me come alive and I'm like coming like these dead dry bones and he's like all right how am I going to raise the dead tonight you know and it's, oh, it's... <laughs> what <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> you have so to raise these dry zombie. dry bones what from the dead it? that is like the worst dirty talk I've ever heard in my life what is that even like I'm just trying to think where she would even like come up with that. That's not even like a analogy for being tired. That's just right? like a weird, this lady's like, oh my God. Well, why would you say that? It's so horrible. <laughs> and you know, we had this massive shift of me, you know, and him, just so many mindset shifts, but me realizing like, oh, I don't come as these dead dry bones. Like just the things that you're describing, like I can do things to prepare and to rest and to get mentally in this space, even physically, like appreciating my body, even thinking about what's going to happen, you know, like bringing out that like inner eroticism to the Absolutely. bedroom, you know, and thinking about like, oh, you know, lingerie, it's, it's not just for him. Like I can feel super sexy in this and that totally changes how I feel when I come into this moment. And so I know for us making some Everybody of those changes Everybody loves has been some dry, dead dry bones and some lingerie. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm poking fun. Super, super helpful. Obviously, we're still on the journey and I'm learning so much, um, but that's been super helpful for me. So if you are a woman out there who's, you know, the dead bones like me, <laughs> you know, yeah. not dead being bones, the dead bones. Bones. <laughs> bones. Here's the thing. I absolutely support Bethany in whatever she wants to do. Her sexual renaissance. Yes. Her eroticism. 
do whatever you want to do, girly. I support you. But I don't know if it was Bethany or if it was Morgan. It was somebody that shared a lingerie website where the lingerie isn't on, like, actual models. So they're like, it's safe for your husband to go buy it because he won't see nudie women on the internet. It's like... Are you serious? You guys are old enough to be engaging in adult consensual sex. And you see women in commercials, Instagram, all of those things that nobody bats an eye at. But God forbid you buy your wife lingerie and you see a woman in a bra. Ah. Ah. (laughs) It's a good idea. Yeah, no, it's a very real thing. I talked to my husband years ago. I'm like, it's like I literally have to switch gears. I'm so tired. I've got baby spit up on my shoulder. You know, I haven't washed my hair in a week. I just don't feel cute. I don't feel pretty. And so it just all bleeds into your sex life. But I realized, like, I need to switch gears from, like, the giving wife, from the giving mom to the orgasmic wife. Like, I have to figure out what is what is it that helps me realize I can be both but not necessarily at the same time and within me is the power to be both but i need some things and so i do take a couple baths a week and Wyatt will put the little ones down and then for a long time we uh practiced date night every night we call it that because it was like we couldn't afford a babysitter and we didn't have anybody nearby so every night from eight to nine was our, our our time set apart and so we did that before eight i wanted to be switching gears in my mind and so i might go freshen up, you know, I had always had baby wipes nearby. So I'd like wipe down or take a quick shower and even just like putting a Yo, if I came onto you and you smelled like baby wipes, I'd be hitting the hay by myself. I'm not going to lie. I do not want to smell those Uh, at any at when he goes down for the night. I've smelled enough baby wipes for the day. I'm I'm good. Just hit the pits and ready to go. <laughs> hit the pits. Please just change it up. You shouldn't do this, but just get some like let Clorox your person wipes take a something. shower. God, get in a shower. Jesus, a shower can just be a little bit longer than wiping yourself down with a baby wipe. <laughs> warm washcloth all over your body and in your private parts. It just kind of reminds you, oh, hi, I am capable of pleasure. And one of my like favorite secrets that's so tiny is buying cute underwear from (gasps) like Target when it's on sale. And because I can easily wear underwear that has holes what in a it, secret. like every day of the week, and just <laughs> this like, is the first time I've heard of it. I thought is underwear that has holes in it? it is for when you want to feel sexy. Who <gasps> <laughs> so has time to go buy new underwear? But when I'm at Target Not and me. then I like buy a couple pairs, I realize like, whoa, I feel differently all day, and yes. nobody knows it except me. And so it's like an internal shift. And then I'm like, can't wait to show. Guess what? I got yes. new undies. And then it's like becomes a little playful thing and texting each other throughout the day and even scheduling sex. I know some people scoff at that, but it's so powerful because then if you know, hey, this week, this night and this night, we're going to be intimate Uh, that morning. I'm getting ready and I am um, carrying. There's nothing wrong with having a sex schedule. My only hesitation with discussing sex schedules is that it's like truly we're setting aside the time because we both want to do it. Not like it's Tuesday and you agreed to have sex. And if we fight, I'm going to cry about it. If we don't at me next time, Paul. That's embarrassing. Different way. I'm probably hydrating. I'm going to exercise because I'll get blood flow going. And so it's just being intentional to think about your sex life, intentional to prioritize it, to really um, focus on it. And even reading books like this Bonnie Burns orgasm book and telling your husband, babe, I'm reading, I'm learning. I can't wait to share with you what I'm learning. Bring him into it. It really is powerful. And just, you know, don't be ashamed of devouring resources about sex because Her it is vocabulary. Real- it's just also. You can tell that she, they just talk dirty to each other all day because it is like regularly part of her vocabulary. Let's do that. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> yeah, we can't have any of that bleeding into your uh, therapizing. <laughs> most, really, I hate to say it, but it's the most important part of a healthy marriage to be intimate physically, spiritually, and emotionally. There are a billion sermons on emotional and spiritual growth. Physical intimacy is not required to have a healthy marriage. Um, 
we are not going to participate in a sexual erasure here. No. Nah. People can be in a healthy relationship without having to touch Even a or engage or in a marriage, uh, in a consensual, non-monogamous relationship. Like, doesn't matter what it is, you can do that without touching each other. Yep. Like, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, this is not a requirement if, to have a good marriage. Even if you're not asexual, some people, it is not the most important part of their relationship. Well, and sex is not the only form of intimacy. Yeah. I tell my clients, intimacy is a spectrum. And we've got zero all the way over here. And then we've got sex that's all the fucking way over here. So there has to be stuff in between. And I don't remember which... Um, where I read it. It might have been in Emily's book. It might be from a sex therapist I follow. Um, but it was something along the lines of foreplay starts immediately after your last sexual encounter. Which is an interesting way to think about it. Hmm. And that's how I explain it to my clients is it's foreplay isn't like I'm touching you with the intent that you're going to be aroused enough that, you know, we can PIV. It's I'm touching you because no expectations or like the expectation should not be that like the trap a lot of couples fall into is like oh she's giving me a back rub that means sex oh hell yeah or she only like hugs me if i'm like getting lucky tonight and so we just set it up that way then so if that equals sex and she doesn't want sex that night, she's not going to do it. And then you're like, she doesn't want to hug me. That's so weird. And I'm like, because hug for her, for you, equals expectation of sex. And she doesn't want that, so she's not going to do that. You know what I mean? So you have to be intentional True. and mindful. True. Okay, we're going to end it there because... <laughs> Oh, God. Baloney says it's time to go. <laughs> and it, it is the end. Anyway. Baloney says this is too much. Huh, Boney? I'm all... Baloney's all... Well, you can get off the table. I know you love to be the center of attention, but let's let's get down to brass tacks here, okay? I don't hate this chick. I feel like... It, She's probably the least toxic person I've ever seen Bethany and Kristen interview. I think she pushes back on a lot of the traditional stuff that Bethany and Kristen push. Yeah. I think a I lot of know. this... I would, I would say she's bordering on progressive, progressive Christian. Definitely. That's the vibe I get, which is why I'm surprised that Bethany was... Having her on? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. So, I mean, I hope that people start listening to women like her. It's just unfortunate. It's just unfortunate, and I want to recognize that there have been non-Christian women also who have been pioneering this research because she's absolutely right that women's pleasure and sexuality and, you know, all of those things aren't prioritized in our day and age and things have gotten better over time but i want to give her credit where credit is due obviously of course but these are not like her original ideas like a lot of these are principles of like a healthy sex life from like sex therapists like there yeah. was some overlap here just adapted to Christian my marriage therapist training worldview. that i've had so it's like this is not like super unique and so i want to recognize that there are other women who have been doing this for a long time and aren't getting the recognition from the religious community because they're potentially not religious or not framing it in a religious way when the tenets are the same so like there's a lot to be missed out on by only reading like work from christian authors because there's it's not that like christian women are incompetent or anything i'm not saying that at all but it's like if there are only source like that's not helpful yeah like there are plenty of people and researchers and experts and sex therapists out there 
who do these things that aren't Christian that have some really good suggestions that are probably worth listening to. Are you the main character? Yes. I don't think so. <laughs> I was a little surprised by by this, but obviously Bethany was not the one talking the entire time, and I'm not going to give them points on this one small thing after all of the bonehead stuff that they discussed in the past, especially in the past year. Definitely honestly. not. So it doesn't absolve them or anything, but we are glad to see people embracing their own sexuality and finally in a space where we're not just allowing like the leadership of your local church to dictate what's going on in your bedroom i think there's still a long way to come but it is uh, a step in the right direction so if more people could embrace this kind of uh, way of thinking, then I feel like the harms of toxic purity culture might be able to uh, slowly fade away into obscurity and just the memories of the people who had to experience it. So hopefully we're moving more that direction. We always talk how harmful purity culture is for everyone, but at how it adversely affects um women in the the religious community so anyway to finish this out shout out to balesa we love to be uh partnered with them and especially to talk about stuff like this when uh we we talk about or when we're partnered with them so shout out to them to wrap things up baloney will let us know to wrap things up, if this is something that you enjoyed and you'd like to see more of, hit that subscribe button. We kind of do a lot of, we're all over the place really with content as you've seen in this past week. It's It's gone from one end of the spectrum to the other. We stream every week at nine Eastern time and six Pacific. And yeah, so subscribe and you will get notifications if you click the little bell for those little things. If you'd like to support us, you can become a patron or a member of the channel. You can get early access to videos and ad free at that. Um, you know, it helps support the channel. This one will inevitably be up well before any of us in the public sees it because it has to be, uh, we have to get it approved by, anyway, don't need to go into that, but it just needs to be up early so everything is squared away. But yeah, exclusive content um, and all that jazz. The members get little cool badges in the, the live chat and in the comments and everything like that so you can announce your support of us so we love that if you'd like to follow along with us you can check out our instagram and our tiktok you can find us at both of those at jordan and mckay we also have march if you want to hit the link in the description down below we have a little merch store it's awesome go check it out we also have a cool discord if you would like to hang out with the homies of the discord it's not just ex-Mormons, not just ex-Christians. It's all kinds of people. People who never belonged to a religion before and find us interesting and goofy and stuff like that. So go and check all that out. Baloney, any last words? He's sleeping. So thank you, everybody. We appreciate you. We love you. Love yourselves. Oh, he's awake now. Oh. And we'll see you next time.